Hey guys, Dan here from Vittertech. And just like I promised, I'm back for the second part of this MacBook M1 review. If you haven't seen the first one, remember to go back. We're taking a look at what's in the box and the significant design changes between 2019 and the 2020 MacBook Pro. So you don't wanna miss that, go back and check it out. Now, if you're here for the spec comparison between 2019 and 2020, then you're in the right spot. Remember to hit that subscribe button to see more from me. Hit that like button because it tells YouTube the videos like this don't suck. Thanks for watching you guys, now let's get into it. So now getting to the specs of M1, do they really make a big enough difference for you to upgrade your MacBook, especially if you have last year's 2019 model, is it really worth that upgrade? Well, the only way for us to check is to do a side-by-side -side comparison through a bunch of different tests. So let's get into that. On the left, we have the 2019 base model with eight gigabytes of RAM and a quad core i5 processor. And then on the right, we have the 2020 base model equipped with Apple's new M1 chip. The first test we're gonna be running is a Geekbench. We're gonna run this on both models to show the immediate spec differences. Okay, so we're gonna start these at exactly the same time. Already, we're seeing significantly faster testing happening on the newer model. This is the power of M1 right here. We're just gonna speed this up to get to the results. Okay, so we're seeing more than double the specs across the board on the two models on both single and multi-core scores. And we're just gonna scroll down here so that you can see the breakout of specs. All right, so next we're gonna do the black magic speed test. So here we're testing out read and write speeds. Let's start them both at the same time. So on the right, immediately much higher write times, topping out at 5,807 megabytes per second. And on the left, we're seeing write times of 1,062 megabytes per second. You can see that the 2020 model is able to write in 4K at 10 bit, whereas the 2019 model can't. And now for the read times, we're topping out at 5,021 for the 2020 model and 3,573 for 2019. That's a crazy difference. Just think, it's a one year upgrade from 2019 to 2020, and we're getting five times the write speeds and just over two times the read speeds. So next we're gonna take a look at a speed test, just your typical test to figure out bandwidth speeds or your internet speeds. Now we're testing internet speeds on gigabit networks on both of these devices. Both are connected to the same router, but again, you're gonna see very different speeds. Okay, so again, here we are seeing double the speeds on the new model here at 441 down and 509 up. Okay, so next we're gonna pull in Adobe After Effects here. I've loaded up my brand new end screen for the channel, which you can see at the end of this video. We're gonna get both models here. As you can see here, they're exactly the same file, exactly the same animations. We're exporting them in the same file size and we're gonna start them at exactly the same time. Let's see these results. So this is a really large file. All right, and there it is. So for the 2019 model, we took an additional two minutes at 14 minutes and 16 seconds. So in terms of the battery life, using this in my day-to-day, -day, I found that I had about double the battery life than I was getting on my 2019 model, which I was charging pretty much every single day. Apple quotes that M1 gives you all day battery life, maxing out to 20 hours of battery life in a single charge. And I would say that's fairly accurate. Using this thing constantly, 
I can usually go two to three days without charging this and without it completely dying. Okay, so the obvious question now, is M1 the right model for you? Is it worth upgrading to? My generalized summary here is that if you're a power user and you're gonna rely on things like exporting files constantly or moving files back and forth, then M1 is gonna be a huge improvement as you can see, in most cases, it's gonna double your speeds of getting things done, in some cases, five times the speeds. So you can imagine how much that's gonna improve your workflow and reduce that time you spend waiting around for your videos to export. Now, the M1 MacBook Pro is not for you if you're the type of person who's going to be relying on things like Boot Camp. The M1 MacBook Pro does not have the ability to run Boot Camp anymore, so you can forget about the possibility of using Windows programs, at least in that format for the time being. Apple has said it'll be up to Windows to make it possible for these Windows apps to run on an M1 processor. And we have seen some initial tests of people getting Windows apps running using Crossover, but that is another video in itself. Okay, so the available models right now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, are the Air coming in M1 in that base model, the MacBook Pro, and of course, the Mac Mini. Most of these tests alone depended solely on that M1 chip, so you don't have to worry a ton about upgrading your RAM or anything like that. It's really just the form factor that you would prefer because all of these models are gonna perform wildly better than the Intel base models without a huge change in price either. So I'm gonna leave a link down below to the new MacBooks. They're non-affiliate. I'm not making money off of these links whatsoever. It's just there in case you wanna pick up a new M1 model like I did. Let me know in the comments if that's something you're planning on doing or if there's something that you think that Apple needs to improve on in terms of their specs. Obviously, there's a ton of significant improvements here, but are they enough to make you wanna upgrade your current model to the M1 model? Let me know all of that down below. As always, remember to hit that subscribe button to see more from me and hit that like button because it tells YouTube the videos like this don't suck. Thank you guys so much for watching and supporting the channel and I'll see you in the next one.